What's up guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. How are you doing today? Thanks for stopping by my studio. Today, we are glazing this. So if you check it out back a couple videos ago, we made this guy, this circle donut shaped teapot, it's hollow. So if you wanna go see how to make it, go check out that video. But today we're gonna glaze it. And so this one we glazed in our Northern Lights drip, so we only glazed it like to here. There's a picture of it. And I thought this one we're gonna glaze a little differently. So this is a different clay, this is this dark iron clay. So I think we're gonna glaze it in our Canyon Skies, which should, should look similar to this. This is the Canyon Skies on buff stoneware. But when I use the same glaze on this clay, it actually like turns like a totally different color. But I don't have any examples of what it's gonna turn. But I remember it was really cool. That's the plan. We're gonna glaze this. And a lot of people ask, do I glaze the inside? And how do I glaze the inside? And the answer to that is yes. And you just pour glaze in there. And then you kind of like swish it all around and then you pour it out. It's pretty easy, you can just pour the glaze all the way up to the top. So yeah, so far it's turned out pretty good. By the end of this video, you're gonna see exactly what this looks like as a completely finished product. Let's do it. I love doing that. I love like, so fun. Guys, this is new Albany Brown. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three different glazes. The Canyon, or the Albany Brown will be the base and the main glaze, and then we'll do a matte white on top of that, and then buttercream on top of that. So it'll get that nice drip color, but the whole thing should be mostly like this nice deep brown color. And then this is kinda like purpley, but I think on this clay it's gonna turn more bluish. Okay, so first thing, we're gonna do the inside. So I'm just gonna pour it all the way in. Still not full. Oh, there it's full. So might as well just, so I know it's completely glazed on the inside because the whole thing is full. Oh, and now it's coming out of the spout. So I can, so I know that that's glazed. Shoot. So either I could put this into a bigger container so I could try and dip it, but I think I'm just gonna pour it. Pretty terrible, terrible backdrop, huh? That's why, that's not why we're moving new studios, but certainly will be better. So there's one side. Gotta get a little more glaze. I like to do it really as quick as possible. Missed a spot right there. All right. Then we'll just let that dry and come back and put another layer on it. Okay, I forgot that we gotta do the lid too. So we're gonna dip the lid. Dip it. Dip it, swish it, swash it. So this I'm just gonna put it up on a, like a little stilt thing, one of these, so that I can glaze the whole thing. I don't have to leave any part unglazed. So I'll just put it up, pink, right on there. And that'll work. So now, now we're gonna dip this into the matte white, which is right here. And then we'll just put one more, one more glaze probably. Unfortunately, this uh, matte white takes a while to dry, so we might even have to leave this till like tomorrow morning before we do the next one. All right, and then we'll uh, leave it and come back when it's all dry. Stick this in the kiln. There's that, and then we're gonna put the lid. The lid on this thing. What? So we got it started. It's been some a weird couple days. Last Yesterday, the power went out. We came in, we were gonna glaze this last night, but then there was no power at Moak Monkey. And so then we had to, they had to, XL Energy had to come and like replace the transformer outside. And then this morning our espresso machine was broken at one of our locations, so I had to fix that. 
And today was Sister Saturday, which is like one of the busiest days, uh, definitely in the spring. So it's been kind of a weird, it's been kind of like this. Whoosh. But now all things are good. Kiln's full, kiln's firing. We'll be back in two days. It's been two days and now we're gonna unload this kiln. So we got this circle teapot in here. We got a bunch of cool cups and we got we got a big pot that my wife um, had all her kids sign for a teacher that's retiring as a gift. So, all right, let's do it. Let's unload this thing. First thing we got are these recycled glass coasters, which these all turned out perfectly. Really, really nice. These are going out for the Kickstarter. Got a few orders on that. Here are some mugs. So these are mugs for uh, my brother-in-law, he wanted some for a wedding, so Z and A getting married, 531.19. I already had the mugs made, so instead of putting it in the clay like you would when it's still wet, I just wrote it on there with black slip. Unfortunately, my handwriting is not very good and it looks like a five-year-old, but you know what? That's the way it is. A couple little planters. Here's the mugs and then I'll take out the teapot. So the teapot, I can see already something went wrong with the glaze. I mean, it probably will work out okay, but here's some just some Canyon Skies mugs just for sale at Mocha Monkey. I like it. So I also did, so this same glaze is what I did on the teapot, right? Ah, shoot. Well, okay, so this is the teapot and Unfortunately, I think the glaze must have, I don't even know what happened, it must have dripped. That's really a bummer. I don't know what happened, but the bottom broke. The bottom broke right there. So I'm not really sure what happened. I mean, the glaze looks good, it looks, this is all cool. Um, it still sits flat, so it can still be used as a decoration, but not worth quite as much with a giant crack out of it. Failed, failed. That's really a bummer, what happened? I don't even know what happened. I should have put it up on a different piece so that this just like stuck to the shelf. Should I just smash it? I'm tempted to just Maybe I should, maybe I should just do a video where I just like slow-mo smash this thing like crazy. But it's all right. So isn't that interesting that this is the same glaze as this. It's on a different kind of clay. That is just so weird. I've never quite seen anything. Still cool looking from that side though. I'll just keep it and maybe display it in the new studio. Oh, this thing has turned out really good. So I put this up on, this is what I should have done. I should have put this teapot up on like something like this so that it wouldn't stick like that. But this is a big planter that has names from all the kids in the elementary school. That turned out really, really nice really really nicely my wife's gonna be very happy with that that's super cool so she had all her kindergarten through fifth grade kids sign the pot so i threw it she took it to school had all the kids sign it some more so whenever you get a really good result i always recommend you just test it over and over and over and make sure you can get repeatable results because really the result is only great if you can get it over and over and over. So this is that same uh, glaze on the same marble clay that I saw before, that I had before. And then this is a new one, which started to get some drips there. That'd be cool if that we got that, but that's kind of fun, like a little lime greeny. There's these little cracks in there, which is called crazing, which I talked to Mako on the phone who makes these glazes, foreshadowing, um, and they said that's normal, is it, you're supposed to get crazing and they have a bunch of tests that they've done that, that, make sh that says that as long as the clay is vitrified, that the crazing is okay. So there's a lot, that's another big controversial thing in the clay world is about crazing. So here's the ball, the ball, the hollow ball of clay that we fired. So there you go, little blue ball. <laughs> and here's the lid for this. God, I'm really bummed. I'm really, really bummed. Bummed that that did not work. Oh, that's really nice. So this was that marbled clay, and then I actually took a carving tool and carved out a little bit. And then I just did one glaze in there. One, that brown, all new Albany brown. That looks really nice. There's another Minnesota mug. I should always write things down. So here's the marbled clay with a spiral in there with a couple new glazes on. And then here's another one of those. So this is the same as this. That blue drip is pretty dope. So there's this giant 
See this kiln shelf right here? So there, this is a bunch of buttercream glaze that just must have fallen off this teapot. Like it just must have like fallen and dripped onto the shelf and I don't really know why or how or what went on there. But that is ridiculous. That's the worst I've ever seen it on my, in one of my shelves. Just completely ran off. The heck happened? Look at these though. Look at that. So this is, oh I can't tell you what this is yet, but I soon enough I will. That's the inside of a bowl, outside of a bowl. I, fun fact, I threw these with one hand. I guess I didn't throw them all with one hand, I threw part of them with one hand, but. Those are cool though, super cool. Here's some of those Minnesota mugs with that drippy, drippy blue. Didn't quite drip as much as it does on this other clay. So here's just some new, a new glaze. Minnesota mug, non-Minnesota mug. Another new one. Oh, that's, there's some crazy stuff in here. Look at this thing. So this again, carved with my diamond core tools. And here's this dark iron stoneware. Oh, what did, I can't even remember what we, what glaze we put on there. Whatever. And then here's a Minnesota mug with a little subtle, subtle Minnesota. These Minnesota mugs, I wax the top, the Minnesota so that no glaze gets on the Minnesota. This one I did not. Gotta write things down. No idea. Don't remember at all what this is, but it was definitely like one that I was just testing out or something, so. Friends, well, that was a pretty interesting firing. I don't know what happened. Something weird happened. Something weird happened and it just busted the bottom. This would have been fine if I just, if I just would have maybe been a little more careful. <laughs> or I put it up on something that was not the kiln shelf, maybe that would have helped, but maybe that would have not helped, I don't know. I think glazing this shape is weird because it wants to drip down and then it like gets to the bottom of here and has nowhere to go, right? We'll probably put that up on a shelf somewhere or else I'll break it in a video, one of the two. All right, all right guys, that is it, it for this video. Appreciate you guys coming along. We glazed this, we fired it, we glazed all this, fired it all, unloaded it. It was a good, it was a good kiln. Even though this is worth a lot more with a full base than it is without it, still pretty cool. All right, if you haven't already, hit subscribe, like, comment, share, all the things. Go over to the Patreon page, I'm sending out pots to patrons every month. Uh, this month we sent out three. If we get over 75 patrons, we'll start sending four, which you got a pretty good chance of getting some pots here if you're a patron of mine in the next few many months. Thank you guys all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.